Tenet was easily one of my most anticipated films of the year, and since I haven't seen most of the movies on my anticipated list yet, I was basically foaming at the mouth waiting for this film to be released. So when I got the chance to finally see Tenet in theaters, I was ecstatic. Before my screening, I had already seen Unhinged, Peninsula, and The New Mutants in a theater auditorium, but Tenet was the first film to remind me of why I love the theatrical movie-going experience so much. This film is truly an experience that benefits from being seen on the biggest and loudest screen possible. However, this is not Christopher Nolan's best film. While it may be a fun addition to his filmography, it isn't exactly a game changer. So you shouldn't feel the need to rush out into a theater if you don't feel safe, or to travel out of state if your city doesn't have theaters open yet. Don't risk your life to see one movie. Tenet isn't going to be the singular film event that saves the box office and reinvigorates public interest back into the theater industry. All of that is going to take time. But with that being said, I must admit, I really did love this movie. And the story, without giving much away, goes a little something like this. A secret agent embarks on a dangerous, time-bending mission in order to prevent the annihilation of the entire world. Yes, Christopher Nolan is back with another time-bending film experience. Only this time, things in the movie appear to be moving backwards through time, while other things are, simultaneously, still moving forward in regular time. It's a unique and strange concept that has a weird scientific explanation involving entropy, but basically, to follow along with the story, all you need to know is this. For an object to travel back in time, it literally has to be moving backwards. That's easy enough to understand, right? Yet, ironically enough, Tenet is overly complicated for no real reason. The first half of this movie is spent delivering exhaustingly heavy-handed exposition, but somehow, it happens to be the wrong kind of exposition? You see, Tenet is basically a spy film, not too different from something like James Bond or Mission Impossible. There's an evil villain with a powerful weapon, and our main character has to go on a secret, international mission in order to stop him. The only difference is, Tenet happens to include wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey stuff in its narrative. And while the time inversion concept is easy enough to follow along with, the actual globetrotting spy mission that our protagonist embarks on is confusing as shit. Our protagonist basically hops around from one location to another, meeting various different characters along the way, but I had a hard time keeping up with what our protagonist was actually doing, why he was doing it, and who he was supposed to be meeting with. And the film didn't really care to explain these things to me, because it was too busy trying to explain inversion. Now, after a few viewings, I do have a much better understanding of what was going on in the story and why. However, given that most people can't go to a movie theater, or feel unsafe going to the theaters right now, it probably wasn't in the film's best interest to feature a story that was this hard to follow along with. So I really wish Nolan had included a couple of more scenes in between all of his set pieces to allow the movie to just... breathe. These scenes didn't necessarily have to be expository since most of the film is spent dumping exposition anyway, but some quieter character building moments that allowed the audience to absorb all of the information that was just thrown at them would have been nice. However, maybe I had a hard time following the story because the sound mixing in this movie was just terrible. People have been complaining about Nolan's sound mixes ever since The Dark Knight Rises, but I've honestly never had a problem with them. Sure, I've missed a few lines of dialogue here or there, but that's no different with me for any movie. Maybe I'm going deaf. However, I really noticed the sound mix here. 
For some reason, all of the dialogue just gets drowned out by the music and the ambient background noise. There are parts of the movie where the dialogue is literally inaudible, and that can make for an incredibly frustrating experience. But, since the music is so prominent, I will say that I did enjoy the film's soundtrack. The score was composed by Ludwig Göransson instead of Nolan's frequent collaborator, Hans Zimmer, and Göransson did a pretty good job here. The music felt like it featured some reversion going on as well, which seemed appropriate given the subject matter. And speaking of Nolan collaborators, this is the first time Nolan had to work with a different editor since Insomnia. Lee Smith went to go work on 1917, so Jennifer Lame was hired to work on this film. And I feel so sorry for her. Lame is best known for working with Noah Baumbach, who, if you didn't know, makes pretty simple movies with straightforward narratives. So I have to commend Lame here, since the editing in Tenet looked extremely complex. I probably would have given myself a headache trying to figure this movie out, so kudos to her for making the film flow nicely, even when the story wasn't so easy to follow. And of course, the cinematography is great. The film has a nice texture to it, thanks to Hoi Fan Hoi Tema. But I will say, I kind of miss Wally Pfister. I think his work on The Dark Knight and Inception was spectacular, as they're probably my favorite looking Christopher Nolan films. But regardless, Tenet still looks very nice nonetheless. However, even though Tenet may be technically impressive, the movie does feel a little cold. This is another common complaint with Nolan films. Despite featuring captivating concepts, engaging stories, marvelous technical craft, and wonderful performances, his movies lack a sense of heart and pathos. They are, as some would say, emotionally distant. And while I would argue that Nolan's previous films are actually emotionally rich and cathartic, I don't really disagree with that complaint here. If you haven't noticed, I've been referring to the main character of Tenet as our protagonist, and that's because he literally does not have a name in this movie. I can't tell you about his past, his motivations are never made clear, and I don't know anything about his dreams and aspirations. He basically lacks an identity. So our protagonist feels less like a fully realized character and more like a function in this story. He's a cog in a wheel, a small piece to a larger puzzle. So while I can easily empathize with and care for characters like Leonard, Detective Dormer, Bruce Wayne, Cobb, and Cooper, I didn't really have any emotional investment with our protagonist, so I'm not really sure as to why I should care about his journey, other than the fact that the world is at stake. But with that being said, the acting in Tenet is actually pretty good. John David Washington is really good as the protagonist, allowing the character to be more charismatic than he probably would have been otherwise. Elizabeth Debicki is also really good. Though her character may be a little thin, her performance is the closest thing to a pulsing heartbeat that this movie has to offer. Kenneth Branagh chews up the scenery in a very stereotypical performance as the main villain, but while some people may hate how cartoonish Branagh comes off as, I actually really enjoyed his large on-screen presence. And this film easily contains my favorite performance by Robert Pattinson. I haven't cared for anything that Pattinson has starred in before, but I really enjoyed his presence here. And I bought the friendship that his character had with the protagonist. Now, I honestly can't wait to see how Pattinson pulls off being the Batman. So even though Nolan tends to utilize his characters like any other tool at his disposal, I can't deny that I enjoy the final product that Nolan creates with said tools. Yes, his movies are a little dense and plot heavy, but he clearly has a wildly creative imagination. And he's very skillful behind the camera, always crafting something that is visually stunning. 
Nolan is a fan of film and of the theatrical movie going experience. So he's always trying to give the audience a massive spectacle to appreciate while pushing the boundaries of what can be done practically in camera. His movies have such a precision to them. So even when his stories feel a little sloppy, I can't help but admire his originality. For instance, I can't wait to see Tenet's behind the scenes footage, because I have no idea how this movie was put together. Some scenes feature people moving forwards and backwards at the same time, maybe even interacting with one another, and that's just really confusing to think about. How would someone even film that? Then, in normal action set pieces, we get to see a real 747 crash. That's insane. And that's why I respect Nolan's work so much. The dude has style and imagination. Am I a little tired of Nolan's obsession with time manipulation? Sure, but that's only because I wish Nolan would showcase a little more range. Like, if he would direct a movie written by someone else every once in a while, he could spend more time fleshing out his original sci-fi concepts while also being creative with someone else's work in a different genre. But I think Nolan is doing just fine. I remember when he first made The Prestige after Batman Begins, and that film was criticized as being his weakest directorial effort. Now, I see everyone online swearing that it's actually one of his best films to date. And I have a sneaking suspicion that the same thing is going to happen with Tenet. It may be getting mixed reviews now, but in 10 years or so, there will be a million videos citing how Tenet is one of Christopher Nolan's greatest. But of course, that comes with the benefit of hindsight and being able to take a step back from the theatrical release. But I don't know, Nolan doesn't need to make a masterpiece in order for me to enjoy his films. He's already made three masterpieces if you ask me, Memento, The Dark Knight, and Inception, and maybe even Dunkirk. So when I see a new Nolan film, I just want to be engaged. And while the first half of Tenet may be heavy and overly complex, the second half of the movie, I thought, was spectacular. Once you finally understand what's going on, the film becomes thrilling and engaging as hell, featuring some very raw, visceral, and jaw-dropping sequences. So I don't think Tenet is inaccessible to mainstream audiences, but I do think some people will find the film to be a little frustrating. But you should know that even though Tenet wants to present itself as a classy and sophisticated feature with heady adult themes and a sleek exterior, make no mistake, Nolan is just trying to make a fun and entertaining movie. The time inversion stuff is just a gimmick, not too dissimilar from what we see in Back to the Future. The mystery box element included in the marketing is just meant to spark an earnest sense of fun and fascination. Nolan likes to make grand spectacles, and even if he gets lost by focusing too much on gigantism, the spectacle he creates is truly a cinematic marvel to behold. He doesn't always balance character development with sweeping spectacle and sophisticated sci-fi themes properly, but it is always fun to watch him try. Some people may see Nolan as a hoity-toity director who loves his artistic vision and is only interested in earning his big box office paycheck, but I've never seen him that way. Maybe I'm just not that cynical. Nolan may not be Spielberg or Kubrick or Hitchcock, but he doesn't have to be. He has a distinct style that is unique to himself, and he clearly has an impressive skill set that allows him to construct movies in a way that is unlike anyone else working today. The name Christopher Nolan is its own brand now, synonymous with some of the biggest blockbuster franchises in the industry. Only, Nolan made a name for himself, and by making some of the best blockbusters over the past two decades that were completely original and not based on any pre-existing IP. That's an impressive accomplishment if you ask me. 
His films are a testament to what more Hollywood blockbusters can be like. So Tenet isn't going to save the film industry, but it is still a damn good, albeit flawed movie that explores some interesting concepts. The time mechanic may not always make sense, and the clunky, often inaudible dialogue doesn't always help, but once you get into the groove of the movie's pace, I think you'll find yourself having a fun time. If you don't find yourself frustrated, and having a headache instead, that is. I for one loved the movie, and it solidified for me the fact that Christopher Nolan is my favorite director working today. We'll see if he hangs on to that honor by the time Dune finally comes out, but until then, I would likely give Tenet four and a quarter out of five stars. Thanks for watching.